Stephen from Chainsaw Ace back today with another video. Today our focus is on this Husqvarna 455 Rancher. The owner says he saw a set a number of years and it will not start. He said he thinks the problem is to do with the carburetor. So let's take a look at it and see what we've got. Okay, now that we've got the saw on the bench, taking a look at it here, it doesn't look so bad. Uh, see a lot of just dirt and gunk here, but when I look here at the primer bulb, I can see that it's cracked. Usually this is an indication that the fuel system has more issues than just a primer bulb, uh, probably hard gas lines, etc. Let's take the top off and give it a look. Okay, now that we have the top off, we can see a spider has made a home here on the spark plug boot. Let's get this plug out and do a compression test. Plug looks pretty good, a little carbon on it, nothing out of the norm. All right, let's give it a pull. Oh, that's not good. Either we have an internal issue with an engine or a starter issue. So let's take the starter off and take a look and see what we can see. Okay, now that we got the starter off, I can see the rope and the rotor look good. So that means a problem lies with our engine here. And this flywheel is not turning by hand. So I am going to put a ratchet on it and try to see if I can break it free. And yep, it just feels like gunk is in the cylinder. Wow, I feel like we dodged a bullet there. I am going to lubricate these paws here, like make sure they actuate properly. Yep, that one feels great. And so does that one. Now let's put the starter back on and we're gonna do a compression test. When I'm doing a compression check on a chainsaw, I like to pull the rope at least a good solid 10 times to get a proper reading on the gauge here, and let's see what we've got. We're over 120 PSI, which is good. Okay, now let's turn our attention to the fuel system. You can see the primer here is bad, so let's take the air filter off and look further. Okay, remember what I said about a primer bulb indicating more issues with the fuel system? As you can see here, yep, these lines are crispy. Here's an up close view. Okay, using a number four hex head wrench, let's remove the air intake carburetor mount. Okay, I like to take the throttle linkage off before I remove the last bolt from the air intake carburetor mount. There's the linkage and it's off. And now let's remove the last bolt. Okay, now let's pry the rubber mounts off the air intake carburetor mount. And there we go. Those are free. And let's unclip the choke from the mount itself, just like that. Okay, now we can really see the condition of this fuel system. Yes, these lines are terrible. And on this side, these lines are really terrible as well. And the grommets. All this is going to need to be replaced. Okay, now let's get the carburetor off the unit and see what we're working with there. One last look at those fuel lines and grommets. Yes, those definitely need to be replaced. Okay, let's get this carburetor open and see what we've got. A lot of junk in there. Uh, this almost smells like a varnish. Uh, very, very bad gasoline. Now let's get the other side off. Four screws.
Sometimes you will need to pry this side of the carburetor off with a small screwdriver. It gets stuck as it is in this case here. Just give it a gentle pry like that and it'll come right off. Now this gasket is really stuck, feels really hard. Okay, yes, it's crispy like the gas lines. Yep, breaking off there. So it's supposed to be pliable. This is what a bad diaphragm looks like in a carburetor. That is absolutely tearing like paper. Now let's remove this gasket. Okay, so, yep, it's gonna tear. A lot of times these will tear and you will need to get a small screwdriver or something handy uh, and actually scrape this off like this. Okay, now we're down to the inlet needle. So we're gonna need to take this out and let's remove this set screw here and dump everything out on the table. There we go. Sometimes the stuff will stick. The spring is stuck there. Let me pull that out. Okay, and the needle is stuck. And I'm gonna need to gently pry up on the needle with this small flathead screwdriver. There we go, it is out. Oh, there's one thing I almost forgot. I forgot to take out the screen here. So let's pry that out. Definitely wanna get that out. There we go. All right, let's get it in the bath. This is a heated ultrasonic cleaner. I have it set to 80 degrees Celsius and I cooked the carburetor for 15 to 30 minutes. I really prefer this as opposed to abrasive carburetor cleaners that are quite toxic. Okay, now time to replace these gas lines and grommets. Got to pry up on the grommets like this. These are coming apart. They're not supposed to do that, so. All right, getting those off and you can really feel and see how this gas line is not pliable at all. So remove that from the primer bulb and let's get this out of here. Just like that. And this line actually has the filter on the other side. So we're gonna need to pull that from inside the tank. Okay, let's get into the tank here and get this fuel filter out. Uh, it's actually easier if you remove the gas cap like this and I have some long forceps to reach in and just pull it out like this. There you go. Fuel filters out. Okay, now let's get new grommets into the fuel tank. I like to lube them like this. Makes it easier to go in. Line it up with a hole. I always start with the back one and press down. You kind of have to work with it, but it will go in like that. Now for the front one lubing the grommet and I'm going to line it up like this and press down. Sometimes they can give you some trouble, uh, but if you work with it, it will go in. Uh, a small screwdriver or something to kind of press on the edges and it will help it to go into the tank and seat properly. This one's a little bit more trouble than the back one and it goes in and it's set flush, just like that. And now to replace the primer, we're gonna pry the tabs like this and pull the old one out. Notice the long stem is on the top there. That's the way they're oriented in these types of Husqvarna's. So we're gonna make sure to put the old one back in the same way. Here is the new primer. And you can see the two together, uh, how big a difference there is. So, all right, new one goes in, longer stem on top. Press it in, it will click and you will feel it, just like that. Now let's get new fuel lines in the saw. I like to start with the back one first. Use forceps, just press it in like this. Have to work with it, it'll go. And this back line actually routes under the manifold like this. All right, cut it off a little bit. And now the front line. This is actually the line that has the fuel filter on it. So I'm gonna press this into the tank here and open the tank itself and use some long forceps and pull it through. I am going to clip off the angle that helped me press it into the tank right here, square, and I am going to install the new filter. Sometimes this can be a little bit difficult, but if you twist it, it will go on. 
just work with it like this and it will seat on there. Okay, now it's time to get the carburetor out of the sonic cleaner. If you're using a heated one, be careful because these can be warm and yes. Okay, now that the carburetor is out of the bath, let's get it dried off with some compressed air here. Make sure you blow in all the holes on the carburetor. Get it good and dry. Looking good. This car looks quite clean. I'm very happy with it. Okay, now that we've got the carburetor clean and dry, it is time to rebuild it with a new kit. Here's the new kit, and we're going to replace the parts that were bad previously. So let's dump it out here. All right. I always start with what I call side one. I'm going to replace this diaphragm first. Just like that. Okay, let's now replace the inlet needle just like this. Make sure you hold a pinky out or it will not go in properly. And now we have to put the spring in its spot here. Pinky out or it will not go in just like that. And for the metering arm, let's place that in its spot as well. Again, pinky out, so crucial. When placing the metering arm in the carburetor, make sure it goes under the head of the needle or you will have issues. It will not function properly without doing this. It's hard to show this on camera, but you'll know when you got it. Now we need to put the set screw to hold it all in place. Here is an up-close view of the needle inlet metering area, and it should function just like this. You can test it. And now let's replace the gasket on the carburetor. Just follow the tabs at the top. It'll line up for you just like this and press down. Make sure it's down good. Now, uh, let's put the diaphragm on. Again, the same tab openings at the top. Just line those up. It will guide you and press it down just like this. Now let's reinstall the cover using the four screws that we removed before. Just line it up and put your screws in just like this. Super simple. Now turning our attention to the other side of the carburetor, let's install the screen filter just like this. Press it in with your thumb and the best tool I have noticed to actually push these down all the way is a pencil eraser just like this. There we go installed. Now let's install the cover for this side. Just make sure you hold everything in place like this and use the one screw. Snug this up and this side is now on. Now that we have the carburetor cleaned and rebuilt, let's get it back on the saw and hook up all the fuel lines to the primer bulb and the carburetor itself like this. Make sure they're pressed on far enough. Okay, now let's install the air and filter carburetor mount back on the saw. Go into the rubber grommet on the far side first and then clip the choke in like this. And then the rubber grommet closest to you like this. This works best for me. Using the four millimeter hex wrench, let's reinstall the four bolts into the carburetor. Long ones on the bottom, short ones on the top, just like this. Now let's install a new spark plug in the saw. Thread it in by hand and then use a wrench to get it tight. Not too tight, just snug it up just like that. Now the boot. I am going to remove the bar and the chain off the saw before I test start it. So let's get this off right now.
Okay, let's reinstall the fuel cap and fill the saw with fuel. Retighten the cap. And now let's test the primer. If it's hooked up correctly, it will fill with gasoline. If not, then you know you have the lines backwards. And this one is correct. I almost forgot a crucial step to reinstall the throttle linkage. Slide it into the back part of the handle first, makes it easier, and then onto the carburetor slot just like that. And there you go, and give it a test, and this one's working correctly. And now let's test start the saw. Give it a prime to choke. And Do a couple of quick adjustments here. And let's set the idle down just a little. And now let's get the air filter back on the chainsaw along with the cover and let's get this buttoned down. Now I'm going to wipe this off just a little bit and use some compressed air to pull off some excess dirt and grime just like this and just make it look a little better. Wipe her up. Looks pretty good. And testing the oiler, and the oiler functions correctly. You can see the oil here. Now let's reinstall the bar along with a new chain that the customer requested. Here's the new chain. All right. Pro tip, make sure you turn the chain tensioner all the way to the back position when installing a new chain to make it go on easily. If not, you might be fighting with this for a few minutes. So, okay, that one goes on. Just like that. Now let's reinstall the bar nuts like this loosely and we're going to turn the chain tensioner to the forward position to take slack out of the chain just like that and lift the bar and tension it a little bit more and tighten the bar nuts like that. Upon doing my chain rotation test, I noticed the chain developed slack again, so I'll need to loosen the bar nuts and retension it. It's common when a new chain finds its way onto the sprocket. Sometimes you have to do this a couple times. There, that chain tension feels just about right. Okay, and one more test run. Here we go. All right. Wow, that sounds really good. It's got good response. Very happy. Awesome. Well, this one worked out. This Husqvarna 455 Rancher will live to run another day. The owner didn't realize how many problems this saw actually had. The gas lines were bad, the fuel grommets were bad, and the primer bulb were all bad that had to be replaced. The saw also had one moment where it scared me. It actually uh, appeared to be locked up. However, the cylinder and piston were just temporarily seized due to the gunk that sit in the cylinder for an excessive amount of time, but we were able to break that free and get it cleared out. Thanks again for watching. And oh, I feel something under the bar here. What does this say? Oh, thanks for watching.